Hi, so this is going to be a quick uh, tutorial on how to create a clock divider in Max using MC. Um, so let's start off with a phaser at 16 nodes and since we're doing MC, we're going to prepend MC.phaser tilde 16n at chance 8 because you want 8 channels of our MC signal. Now you want to make sure that your uh, audio is turned on and your transport is also running. Let's zoom in a little bit for that. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now the way what M, what phaser does is that it sends a ramp going from zero to one at a specific time frequency. So now since we set it at sixteen and whatever the um, tempo of our max patch is, is going to create a ramp going from zero to one at uh, the sixteenth note interval. Phaser does take note values as um, as a time input. Okay, now since we're gonna do some clock division on this, what we need is the MC dot rate tilde object. Now, one thing you gotta know that when you're working in MC is that the top level patch, the top level object, sets the channels for every um, next MC object. So since we declare MC dot MC dot phaser tilde to be chance eight, that means eight channels. That uh, that means that MC rate tilde will also get eight channels. And here we can see I've got debugging turned on, so we're getting a constant um, ramp going from 0 to 1 at the 16 note interval on all 8 channels. Now what we want to do is that we want to modulate each and every channel at a different um, level. Um, so the best way to do that is to use an mc.target list. Um, .target list. And since we need 8 of them, I'm just going to type in the arguments 1, 2, 8. So now I can target each and every channel of the uh, mc.rate tilde object. Uh, now I want my um, offset divisions to look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, and so on and so forth. So the best way to do that is to store them in a call. I'm going to call this call rotation, and I'm going to make sure that save data the patch is turned on. So the next time I reopen this patch, it's going to be saved. So over here, let's index these values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Semicolon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3. 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. And lastly, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is loosely based off the rotating clock divider by uh, Formis. So that's the way that 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 works. But you can store whatever values you want in this uh, lookup table. Okay. So now we have now each time. I'm going to bring up a dial. I'm going to set the size of the dial to be 8. So that's going to give me values from 0 to 7. So I can index each and every value from my call. Now we need to unpack all those values. I'm going to use unpack 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I stands for integer. And I'm just going to connect these up over here. Uh, there you go. Boop, boop. Okay, so now it should be sending out these rotation values to our MC dot rate. Now we have these coming in as signal values, but we want to convert them into um, banks because that's what we use in Max to like trigger things. So I'm just going to go to the phaser uh, help file, go to temporal relative, and just take this P to deck edge. I'm gonna paste it over here. Uh, let's de-encapsulate this. Let's come on, shift D. Okay, so these are the things that we need. These are the set of objects that we need to convert that uh, ramp going from zero to one. So whenever there's a logical transition, it gives us a bank. So I'm gonna use the MC dot delta. Just gonna use the MC equivalence of these objects. So I'm gonna use MC dot delta. Um, then I'm gonna use MC dot less than tilde minus 0 
and I'm going to use the mc.edge. Now mc.edge is a little bit different uh, than edge because a normal edge gives you a zero to one transition and a, a one to zero tran and a one to zero transition. Over here, it gives you the same things on the left and the middle outlet. But on the right, it gives you the voice number, and that's the main defining factor that's going to let us um, take those outputs and like route them to where they need to be. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pack um, pack um, symbol bang. So what that's going to do is I'm going to so if you look over here, it's going to give me the voice numbers. And it's going from one to eight. You can see over here. Oh, it's not going to show me anything as of right now. But there, you you see all the different um, ramps that are going, and you can see our third one, third one from the bottom. So that should be one, two, three, four, five. Sixth one is the uh, sixth. No, sorry, the seventh one is the sixteenth note, and the sixth one is the eight uh, division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a route message to um, format, sorry, to get each and every bang out. So I'm going to say two symbol. So it's going to convert that into a symbol. And I'm going to put that symbol over here. I'm going to take my bang and I'm going to put it over here. Now this route, all of them. So all I need to do is use a route all object and say voice one voice 2, voice 3, voice 4, voice 5, voice 6, voice 7, and voice 8. Great. So now, if I put a bang over here, you see this is going at 16 notes. This will be going half the speed of that, and so on and so forth. Now, a rotating clock divider is great to get like um, polyrhythms, to get um, like different sounding rhythms. And what's great is that you can always move them. If you've seen the rotating clock divider by 4ms, this is a very close approximation of it. All only thing that's not there is like a reset, which you can do with the phase input of the MC of phasers of the MC of phaser. So you can have like your every downbeat. Um, every two bars just like sets or resets the phase. Yep, so that's a quick and dirty uh, tutorial on how to make a rotating clock divider in Max. Hope you have fun.